yeah, my name is Soji Hanim Bukram. I'm working with the Scalable Solvers Group in the CRD, and um, most of my work is on uh, GPUs. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about the uh, algorithm that we've developed for parallel H2 matrix factorization uh, based on skeletonization. So there are a lot of applications uh, where our discretizations lead to uh, large, dense matrices that are usually too expensive to either store or compute with. Uh, so storage could, could grow something like uh, quadratically, and if you, wanted to, if you want to factorize with it, then it's order n cubed. Uh, for example, we have integral equations, uh, which we uh, uh, tackle with uh, boundary element methods. Uh, we have uh, sparse direct solvers uh, from the finite element method, where you can have uh, these diagonal blocks uh, could be filled in and become dense, and we need to be able to factorize those uh, diagonal blocks, and they're quite large. And we have Hessians from uh, PDE constrained optimization, uh, where you have uh, where you need to infer parameter models, uh, 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 the model uh, parameters uh, from observations with uh, a partial differential equation, uh, uh, mapping the, mo the uh, parameters to the observables. Uh, for example, uh, seismic inversion or source inversion. Uh, so we have all these large dense matrices, and uh, we can't really work with them uh, directly, uh, but we can exploit a uh, uh, their uh, uh, data sparsity in that uh, lots of these, there are large, uh, there are a set of blocks within the matrix that can be well approximated uh, using a low rank uh, form. For example, this matrix here, uh, 8ES, can be represented in terms of the outer product of two tall and uh, skinny matrices. So this U and V transpose, uh, the, uh, the number of columns in U and the number of rows in V transpose are typically quite small compared to the dimension of that block. We call that ranks uh, K. So if we can represent all of, uh, the blocks within this matrix, either in uh, low rank form or as uh, if they're too small, we can keep them in their original dense form then we can end up with something called a hierarchical matrix, uh, which can give us near optimal complexity uh, for, uh, for storage. So we can store this matrix instead of order n squared, we can store it in order n log n uh, space. Uh, so um, how do we uh, construct this hierarchical matrix? Well, we can, uh, first thing we do is we uh, cluster the degrees of freedom into a cluster tree, something like a KD tree or an axis aligned bonding Marxist tree could work. And then we're going to, uh, if we take pairs of these clusters, then those pairs would define blocks within the matrix. Uh, and we want to find out if that matrix can be well, uh, can be approximated or not by uh, a Laurent matrix. Uh, so we define an, an admissibility condition, which tells us based on uh, if, if pairs of clusters can be uh, uh, st uh, stored as low rank, or if they if they're uh, which we would call an, an admissible block or if they need to be subdivided further and which we call an inadmissible block. Uh, so we could we, so we uh, do a dual, dual tree traversal uh, on this cluster tree and uh, figure out the structure, uh, the low rank structure of this matrix. Uh, so here, for example, we went from the roots uh, level by level, figuring out at each level the, the inadmissible blocks in blue and the uh, admissible blocks in green. Until we reach, you know, like the admissible level, uh, the admissible nodes are too small. We just store them in their original dense form. So we have a structure, and we'd like to be able to uh, compute with it. But first, we want uh, we want to convert that H, ma H matrix, which was uh, order n log n, into something that is optimal. Um, and to do that, we would we first uh, we represent the basis uh, uh, in, as a nested basis. And that's uh, those u's and the v's that I talked about at the start. Instead of representing them uh, uh, directly, we would have an implicit representation between uh, between uh, levels in the tree, so that the parents can be represented in terms of their children using these small little k by k, where k is the rank uh, transfer matrices. Uh, doing that for the entire tree and then changing the representation of the blocks instead of u v transpose, we now we have u s v transpose, where the u's are these implicitly represented. Uh, bases, and the S are the uh, coupling matrices. These are all small k by k blocks. Then uh, we would end up with uh, something that uh, we can store the matrix in optimal uh, complexity, order n. Um, and I'm going to assume for the rest of the talk that the basis vectors, these u's, are uh, orthogonal. So in other words, if we take u transpose u, then we end up with the identity matrix. So uh, now we have an Asian matrix, and we'd like to be able to uh, Factorize it, or at least get it, get a uh, uh, 
an approximation of uh, some factorization that we can use to solve systems of equations. And to do that, we we're going to uh, convert, we're going to uh, convert our matrix into a block diagonal matrix using a series of easily in, uh, invertible transformations. For example, orthogonal transformations and uh, elementary row and column operations. Um, and to, e uh, to more easily visualize this, I'm going to split the matrix into two parts, the admissible parts, so here are all the green blocks, and the inadmissible parts, so these are the, uh, these are the blocks that couldn't be subdivided further and are stored in their original dense form. And here we have this F, which is the fill-in matrix that we would, uh, that's going to be populated as the factorization proceeds. So uh, the first step is we apply orthogonal transformations to eliminate the, uh, the admissible blocks. So for example, this first cluster uh, is we eliminate the redundant portion of the matrix by applying orthogonal transformations. Um, these orthogonal transformations are basically taking the original basis vectors that we had uh, that I uh, the use in the Vs that, that were orthogonal and we're, we complete it using their complements uh, using a complementary basis. So that's when we when we scale these rows and columns, we zero the, out the redundant portions. And once that's done, then we can turn our attention to the uh, inadmissible part and um, uh, just use you know like a regular. LU factorization to get rid of the, uh, uh, you know, like we do column and uh, uh, row operations to uh, eliminate these, um, the off diagonal portion. Um, and that'll, of course, generate some fill in, which we move to this F matrix here. And uh, in the next step, when we are eliminating the redundant portions of the admissible parts, we'll also eliminate the, uh, the fill in part. So we do that for all of the clusters. And in the end, we end up with a, skelet with a skeletonized matrix. So we, uh, we have a bunch of uh, all the redundant portion of the matrix has been zeroed out in the admissible parts and the inadmissible part, with, all, with the only remaining parts on, of the inadmissible part being the, di the, di the block diagonals. And uh, all of those transformations can be easily inverted. We have, so we had orthogonal transformations and row, row and column operations, which can be easily inverted. So that when we get to uh, the factorization uh, to the solve part, then that can be easily uh, uh, computed. Um, to move to the next level, we're going to for, uh, first move all of the all of the uh, blocks that were skeletonized from the ad admissible part and the fill matrix to the the inadmissible part, and then we're going to sh uh, we're going to shift all of the redundant portion to the end of the matrix. So we end up with something like this. You can see that now we have a block diagonal matrix on the inadmissible part where uh, these can be easily uh, these can be easily inverted, and then this matrix can be then uh, factorized uh, recursively using the same method. So we, we then now turn our attention to just these uh, the skeletonized portion of this matrix, and we can move to the next level. And we keep on doing that until we reach the uh, the the root of the tree, where we can just use regular dense factorization on something that should be quite small. Um, now uh, we implement. We want to implement this on the GPU. However, there uh, all of the matrices that all of the little blocks that we were talking about these the coupling matrices and the transfer matrices. These are all small k by k blocks, and we said that the k is the rank, and the rank is usually quite small, uh, based on uh, based on uh, dependent on the problem. Uh, so if we try to uh, pass these operations onto the GPU, then uh, GPUs require large amounts of work to be able to uh, uh, process things efficiently. Uh, for example, this is an example of a matrix matrix multiplication using one of those k by k uh, blocks, and you can see that uh, uh, this is this is how much time it took to launch the kernel, and this is just this is the actual work. So unless we uh, sort of package the work in, in a more efficient manner, then we're not going to be able to use the GPU efficiently. Uh, to overcome that, to overcome this kernel launch overhead, we're going to flatten our trees uh, and then uh, uh, by level. And then uh, launch all of the work at once, uh, 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 all the work within the level that can be parallelized uh, at once using a single kernel launch, uh, using batched uh, uh, kernels. So like uh, within magma and kblas. And now within the uh, factorization routine, there are of course going to be some data dependencies, and to be uh, to resolve those data dependencies and be able to send as much parallel work as we can within a level. Uh, we first uh, pass it through a, uh, a graph coloring algorithm. So we take the uh, the inadmissible the inadmissible portion of the matrix. We take its uh, sparsity graph, uh, and then we uh, we pass it through a graph coloring algorithm. So now all of the all of the uh, uh, 
uh, nodes that all of the clusters within that have the same color can be uh, uh, factorized in parallel. And uh, the number of uh, colors is limited by the sparsity constant, which is the maximum number of uh, uh, blocks within a, a row or a column. And that doesn't grow with problem size, so we can be sure that we can have a lot of work as we increase the problem size. Um, here, I'm, uh, I, uh, we have an additional implementation on the uh, CPU uh, where we can see that it's the factorization time and factor, uh, factor memory uh, grow linearly with uh, problem size. Uh, so uh, we can expect some, uh, some good performance on, uh, on the GPU, hopefully. And um, yeah, so the, uh, the work that we've done is available online. Uh, it's an open source library uh, called H2 Opus. Uh, we're currently working on developing non-uniform GPU batch kernels. We're relying on Magma for some of them, uh, but some of them need to be developed uh, by uh, uh, ourselves. And we're going to incorporate this into sparse direct solvers like SuperLU and Strumpack, uh, get things distributed um, so that we can solve larger and larger problems. And if you'd like to check out the library, and uh, there, uh, it's, uh, this is the URL. It has uh, publications that you can uh, check to see other, uh, other uh, algorithms that are available within the library. Thank you. Thank you for your nice talk. Um, any questions for YG? If you want to do this, use this to do a matrix multiplication, but your two matrices have different structures of which parts of the matrix are admissible or inadmissible or easy to factor. How does that work? Well, uh, if, uh, there, are, there are methods also available within the library that can construct it using uh, 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 samplers. So there is a, all you need to do is to be able to construct the matrix is actually multiply it by a vector. If you can do that, then you can, uh, uh, then you can take any, any, any two matrices uh, and uh, multiply them together, add them together. Any, operate, any, any matrix expression you want that can be multiplied by a vector, we can construct it as an H2 matrix. Any other questions here or online? People on Zoom, feel free to post your questions in the chat as well. If you wanted to do this in reduced precision arithmetic, what would change? Anything? Um, um, not much, um, because the the uh, the actual. The library is templated, so it's, yeah. it's you can use any any uh, you can swap the accuracies for uh, any of the uh, uh, components uh, matrices like this coupling matrices or the the inadmissible blocks. You can you can choose the accuracy that you'd like them to be represented in. There are some algorithms that are difficult uh, to reduce the uh, uh, the uh, accuracy on those things, like. Uh, 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 like if you need to do uh, a QR, QR, for example, it would be difficult to represent those matrices uh, in anything but double precision. Um, but for like for like a matvec, it's uh, you can you can go as low as you want. So could I do something like store the factors in different precision levels with each of the blocks? You mean like for the uh, so the the factors are actually just the product, yeah. uh, are just like. Uh, product of these uh, transformations. So you can store those factors in whatever uh, precision that you like. Um, yeah. Thanks. Any final questions? If not, uh, let's thank Waji again. <laughs>